Picking the best ever is the stuff of bar stools. And my best ever Irish rugby team was certainly one man's opinion. And also, of course, we're talking about different eras. We're talking about players that many people wouldn't have seen. Would Rocky Marciano have beaten Cassius Clay? Um, would is war a better batsman than Bradman? Would uh, Ronnie Delaney have beaten Eamon Coughlin? We'll never know, but it's good fun. This team represents the distillation of all the great Irish players that I have seen over the last 60 years. At fullback, you have to go for Tommy Kiernan. When you go back at the early Kiernan, he was the first of the attacking fullbacks. Remember, this is a man who was a great cricketer. Kiernan could catch a ball with wonderful skill and courage. He's got to be the place kicker on this team as well. And his record isn't bad when you consider the ball he was forced to kick with. Now, on the wings, you've got some really tough choices here. But Tony O'Reilly, you've got to pick. Not because for his performances for Ireland, but rather when you reckon that he went to South Africa with the Lions at 19 years of age, established a record for tries scored on a tour, four years later goes to New Zealand with the Lions, scores a record again, which stands to this day. O'Reilly on one wing. You got a problem on the other wing. The magnificent Niall Brove or the ebullient Simon Gagan. Gagan's career, tragically cut short by injury, sneaks in ahead of Brophy, the marvellous 200-metre runner, because Gagan scored some wonderful tries, destroying Rory Underwood in Lansdowne Road. Gagan, who could uh, swerve, had pace, could tackle. Oh, yeah, I have to go for Gagan. Now the centres, some extraordinary talent here, but at inside centre, Michael, Campbell, Henderson, Gibson. No choice, an extraordinary career of over 60 caps, easily on any team, probably even on a world side at inside centre. Taking a chance at outside centre when you pick somebody whose career isn't yet over. But Brian O'Driscoll has done so much in his extraordinary short lifetime as an international centre, I think he beats them all at outside centre. What a backline. There's no choice at out half. The incomparable Jackie Kyle. Even New Zealanders said he was the best fly half ever to tour the country. Anybody who saw Kyle knows that we're watching something special. Scrum half's a really tough call, but I have no doubt. Colin Patterson, whose speed of pass rivaled Stringer, but was a better breaker off the side of the ruck and scrum, and a better kicker. Colin Patterson, also a lion, of course, must come in at scrum half. Now the front row. Here is where it gets tough, because the, an awful lot of the work done by front rows is deep in the darkness of the scrum and the ruck. At loose head, Great choice. Tommy Clifford, this was a man who was a labourer with Limerick Corporation, who came from the kind of working class rugby. Clifford was a magnificent prop forward for whom the New Zealanders held in awe and there would be no finer testing ground. The other prop has to be Ray McLaughlin. Played on both sides of the scrum, a tight head and loose head, brought an extraordinary intellect to bear on the game, was superbly talented technically, Ray McLaughlin at tight head. Hooker causes us a lot of problems. Who could turn around and say that Keith Wood isn't the best hooker? What about Kieran Fitzgerald? No a young medical student, straight after the war, asked to captain Ireland at maybe 21 or 22 when at the Royal College of Surgeons studying medicine. Carl Mullen is the hooker. Led Ireland to two uh, triple crowns and, and, of course, a grand slam. Extraordinary stuff. Second row, well, of course, there's no choice, is there? Willie John McBride. This is a man, five Lions tours, captain of Ireland, captain of the Lions. Again, extraordinary physical battles. He challenged the best around the world and wasn't found wanting. Finding a partner is tough, though. 
But again, if you take the Lions as the pinnacle of achievement that Bill Mulcahy, two Lions tours, was good enough to be selected for the Lions a wing forward, this is a very special man. The back row, well, you know, there is simply no choice at number six. It's back to that great team of the 40s and 50s, Bill McKay. So hard, was hard enough to be part of the SAS during World War II in the North African campaign. If you're going to pick hard man, then at number eight it becomes really tough. You've got Lanky, Ken Goodall, you've got the great Des O'Brien, but no. Smoking, drinking, not training too often, Willie Duggan. Another hard man whom the New Zealanders bowed the knee to. Duggan was magnificent. Now, when you go to open side, given that you think this is the fulcrum of the side, no, I think it's J.F. Slattery. Slattery almost had everything. If he could have passed at the highest level, then perhaps he would have been the greatest flanker in the world. 